residuals, error amounts, residual analysis. We want to cover this. Remember Horton, here's a woo. We had ordered pairs. We plotted those points on a graph. We found the line of best fit, and look, there it is. That's a scatter plot. Well, then we decided, you know what? After we plug in the values for x and we get our predicted y from the equation, least squares regression line, then we could say, what is the error amount? How far off are we in our prediction of the, of the y values? Well, to do that, we do y minus y hat. That's the error amount, and that's called a residual. So a residual is the y minus the y hat. That's how uh, we're going to get these error amounts. So what we're going to be able to do is come up with a residual plot. What we have is a scatter plot, x paired up with its output, the number of peanuts, the y values, or a residual plot where x is being matched with its residuals. So what we had is when we had 10 hours, our residual was a negative 2. So at 10, we go to negative 2 on the axis, and we put a residual of negative 2. At 12, it was 3.1. Our observed value was 3.1 units above the predicted value. Then we had a residual of negative 1.8. Uh, mm -hmm. So, boom. And then a residual of 2.3. Bam. And then a residual of negative 1.6. So, boom. So there it is. A residual plot would look like that. Uh, so it's how far are the points away from the... Uh, line. So, scatter plot, residual plot. X axis is the same, but the Y is different. Uh, so here, then we have a problem like this. What if we had a least squares regression line like that? So, hmm, Y intercept to 15, negatively sloped, and we saw this residual plot right here. Could we find the missing value hooking up with 2? Well, you bet your sweet bit. We could go over here and we say, hey, when X was 2, our residual was plus 2. It meant that our observed Y was 2 units above the predicted Y. So there's two ways to figure this out, to figure out the uh, missing value. One is the more practical way, just the understanding of it. If we plug in 2 for x, we find that the predicted y was 15 minus uh, 4, which is 11. And it's as simple as this. Our residual is plus 2. That meant our observed value was 2 units above that, so our observed value was 13. We do it, I'd prefer to do it that way. But if we're a formula person, we can say, okay, no problem. The uh, residual is always y minus uh, y hat. That equals the residual. So let's plug in what we know. Uh, we know, we don't know the y, so that's the unknown. Minus, we can figure out the y hat from the formula. That's 11. And we know the residual is 2. We get that from the residual plot. So we can solve that algebraically and also arrive at the notion that the observed y must have been 13. All right, now here, this is a scatter plot, but let's let's wrap our brain around what would the residual plot look like that matches with this. Well, on the x-axis, we'd go the same units over, there's a negative residual, boom. Then we have a positive residual, a little bit over further, and then one below, and then another one below, and then one there, and then that's the outlier. And then we got, and we got, and we got, ooh, we got one right on the line. That meant that our prediction was right on the money. The observed y was exactly equal to the predicted y, so there was no residual. So by the time we get over there, uh, there's a uh, there's a zero residual. So at any rate, if we figure with these, we got something that looks like that. But the residual plot should look like this line, pretty much tipped on its side. Not exactly, but pretty close. Showing the error amounts, showing how the points scatter about the line. So residual analysis. Should you trust the least squares regression line to predict? If you see a residual plot like this, then you know that the data is curved around the line. Our, our observed values are above the line, but then below the line consistently, then above the line. So our scatter plot, if we had a positively sloped regression line like this, we know that the points are going about the line where they're above for a while, but then below for a while, and then coming back above. So we have curved data. A line is not appropriate. You could see it from a scatter plot, you could see it from a residual plot. So that violates uh, linearity. It's not linear, it's curved. Then if you see something like this, what does this imply? This implied that if you have a scatter plot that, and you have a line of best fit, and maybe this time the line of best fit is going in a negative direction, that in this interval, hmm, in this interval right in here, from here to here on the x-axis, the points are holding really close to the uh, scatter plot. So the points are holding close to the predicted uh, uh, line, the prediction line. But when we go outside that, when we go to these lower values of x, you can see there's just a whole lot more scatter down here. 
and there's a whole lot more scatter up here as well. So what we say is, you know what, this line is doing a lousy job of predicting out in here and out in here. That's no good, uh, but it's consistent there. So we say that's a violation of consistency of the variance of the observed points about the line. Don't trust the line to predict for anything other than what's in that small interval. This is healthy. No noticeable patterns, so that's a healthy looking residual plot. Very random. This is suspicious. We have two clusters with a gap in between. Anytime that happens, we figure we probably have two different populations. If you look at a scatter plot and you had some line of best fit, maybe this time it's going in a, in a positive direction, what you really have is a bunch of points scattered above the line in a cluster and then another set clustered like below the line. And that's what's leading to a residual plot like that. And what we learned, we've already discussed this in one sense with univariate data, but we're going to think about it now as well. What we really have is a separate population up here and a separate population down there. And there should be some categorical variable that explains the differences in the population, whether it's gender or public versus private sector or whatever. And so what should ultimately happen is that we should say, well, you know what? Once we figure out what this population is and this one is, we should separate the groups and do a separate regression line predicting results for each of those two populations. But at any rate, no observable pattern, there's a gap and two clusters, so we shouldn't be trusting this line to predict. We probably have two populations. Later in the course, when we do inferential slope analysis, we're going to learn something that I think is kind of interesting, and it's this. How spread out are these points? We could discuss that spread based on standard deviation, sample standard deviation S. And what we're going to find is that we should find about 68% hmm, of our residuals within one standard deviation of the line, within one standard deviation of a residual of zero. So 68% should be in here. Take a wild guess as to what percent of the residuals should be within about two standard deviations of the, uh, of the residual of zero. Well, that would be 95%. So, it's that rule of 68, 95%, 99.7% that generally speaking, the distribution of the residuals should be normally distributed about the regression line. And so that becomes a big deal later and we'll go back to saying that's a violation of normality. Because if there's one standard deviation here and two standard deviations here, one here and two here, then there's a bunch of data between like one and two standard deviations above and one and two standard deviations below the regression line. That violates normality. One last problem, and it's right here. Find the residual when x is 6, and when it's 6, y is 19, the observed y, knowing that this is our least squares regression line. Well, remember, again, that a residual is y minus y hat. So we need the observed y, that's this guy, that's the 19. We need the predicted y that we can get from this equation. So we plug in the 6, we were told when x was 6, we got 19 for y. So this comes out to be 22. So our predicted y was 22, our observed y was 19. 19 minus 22 is negative 3. The residual is negative 3, meaning our observed y was three units below what we would have predicted with our least squares regression line. So there's an intro to residual analysis and it becomes uh, fairly important the further we get into the course.